good day. It's a good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will talk to you about entertainment. Uh, in HEB, that's what we do, home entertainment products. And that's what we focus on. So let, let's summarize a little bit what the presentation will be about. Um, I'll show you a bit of what we did in 2010, of course, focusing on the first uh, three quarters. Um, show you a little bit about the environment, how the market is uh, evolving around us, and what's driving our growth. And I'll show you uh, more about our strategy and the fundamental technological assets we have. And uh, outline a few priorities for 2011. So when we say HEB, what we talk about, uh, home entertainment is uh, TV and monitors, set-top box, and audio products. A pretty uh, well-defined um, area of, of products, uh, mostly system on chips, uh, but also a lot of peripherals going around the system on chips and, uh, and uh, multimedia products. So um, we believe, <laughs> based on analyst numbers available, um, research numbers, that we've been uh, outgrowing the market. Our growth in the first nine months of 2010 was 38% year on year, uh, whereas the market, uh, according to analysts, has grown the, the addressable market uh, from HEV has been growing around 28%. So we've been growing 10% faster than the market during the first nine months. I think we can claim we've been gaining market share. I don't think we fall will change much uh, that overall picture. Um, so we've been uh, growing uh, faster than the market. We represent uh, between 11 and 12% of the total ST sales, which have been 7.5 billion in the first nine months of, uh, of last year. So we're uh, gaining share in consumer applications. Uh, one of the things, you know, uh, people, we're often compared to one of our competitors, uh, which I won't mention, but I guess we all know who it is. Uh, they're definitely leaders in the U.S. market, but the U.S. market represents, I'd say, a bit, a bit above 25%, a bit above a quarter of the world market. So we're clear a leader outside of the U.S. We're present in the U.S., but we're not leaders. Uh, but we're definitely leader outside of the U.S. So. When people think about us in the set box market, they, they should remember that the US is not the only, uh, the only market, uh, although it's an important market for us as well. So some of the uh, highlights of 2010, uh, very good revenue growth, as I mentioned, 38%, that's not bad. Okay, it's after a very bad year, after 2009, but it's still a very impressive recovery gaining share. Uh, our Generation 2 products, and I'll come back on what I mean by Generation 2 products and Generation 3 later, later in the presentation. Generation 2 products uh, have been extremely successful. Uh, we have a, a lot of customers in very high volume production. Generation 2 represents now more than 50% of our uh, shipments and units and much more than 50% in, in dollars. Uh, generation, 3, generation 3 products which we introduced uh, here last year, a year ago, uh, have now been adopted by uh, a lot of customers um, who have been developing during the course of 2010. And uh, these products are now ranking up uh, both in set top box and TV uh, platforms. So 2010 is a good year on numbers. It's also a good year in terms of designing activities and uh, new projects coming in. So we're, ex we're expanding in the digital TV. Uh, as you know, we were not in this market, the integrated digital TV chipset, uh, with Freeman Generation 3 TV products, uh, which we introduced here last year. We're doing a re-entry, and definitely our priority now is to expand and get more uh, volumes out of this platform. In set top box, we're already in a very strong worldwide leadership position which, of course, we want to maintain and enhance. Let's look at the market environment a little bit. Um, clearly, what's driving uh, our future is overall connectivity. Every consumer device becomes connected. So we have a nickname for it, C3.0, uh, like, uh, like uh, Internet 3.0. Clearly, all consumer devices are becoming internet connected. And 
also connected together inside the living room or inside the home. Uh, so this whole connectivity uh, of smart devices is definitely a big driving factor for uh, our revenues in the future. Another big driving factor, fa factor is the user experience, uh, which we call rich multimedia user experience. Well, things like 3D, of course, uh, things like HD 120 hertz, 240 hertz, and things like that are becoming the norm. Uh, things like interactivity between uh, human beings and, uh, and the TV set uh, are also changing uh, very much the way people behave with their consumer devices. So this is also driving a lot uh, our business. And finally, uh, remains a very important factor is uh, green products. Power consumption is still a big issue, both in TV and set the box. Um, and power consumption can also go to the fires. So green is a very important part uh, of the driving forces in our markets. And I'll come back onto that. Um, as leaders, we have to be ahead of the market. One of the areas where we clearly are ahead of the market is the transition from standard definition MPEG-2, which is the original digital TV standard, to high definition MPEG-4, the new standard. Um, the crossover in the marketplace is going to happen in 2011. So more than 50% of the market will use H.264 uh, compression technique um, in, in 2011. For ST, the transition or the crossover has actually happened one year, 18 months earlier than for the rest of the market. So we've definitely been leading the H.264 transition. And for us in 2010, it was already more than 50% of our shipments. So uh, this is another sign that we are leading the market and driving the transition of the industry rather than following, which of course if we're driving, I guess the other story. Um, there's plenty of other evolutions in the market, and our roadmap is actually uh, aligning or slightly ahead of that in terms of uh, delivering uh, new technology to the set of box. 3D definitely uh, has been last year and this year the big item. Um, server client architectures, gateway to the home architectures will in the future uh, be important technologies, and you'll see in our roadmap and even some of our demos that were already ahead of that transition and preparing the right products for this. In TV, there's a lot of innovation, a lot of space for introducing new technologies there. There's a few that are listed uh, on this chart. I won't go into details. Again, we have a lot of demos uh, showing, showing we have the right products at the right time and even ahead sometimes of the market, uh, ready to be deployed. So this is a we're watching these markets and we're driving these markets uh, with a lot of innovations. Another area uh, which we see very much growing is, as I said, the area of connected homes. So both TVs and set-top box become uh, internet-capable, internet-enabled, and this is driving a, a huge growth uh, for us. With, of course, with more silicon content, more software content, more margins, potentially, and more barrier to entry for competitors, which is a very important uh, aspect as well. Uh, I know there's a lot of skepticism about 3D, um, but 3D is everywhere now. Uh, you don't have a week without an announcement of new service, new content, new technology, new boxes, new TVs, uh, new projectors, new games. So this is, this is really pervading very, very fast. And although we can hear or read analyst reports uh, being a bit skeptical about it, uh, no matter what we read, this is happening. Uh, it's happening because the whole industry wants it. It's happening also because the consumers want it. Um, so it's it's a, it's a matching very well. And you know when you see the, the advertising dollar that's being spent on pushing 3D equipment through the stores. Uh, 3D content, that there's a, there is a momentum that nobody, nobody will stop. Uh, another way to look at it from a silicon vendor, let's say nobody will take the risk to adopt a silicon platform for set top box for TV, that's not 3D capable. So even though sometimes they may decide at the end to produce a 2D set top box or a 2D TV, silicon it will be 3D capable. Nobody's going to take the risk to take a uh, a lower capability 
silicon. So as far as we're concerned, all our uh, G3, G4 silicon is 3D capable. Uh, even some of our G2 chips were already, because of the game, we, we anticipated we got the functionality in our chips, but clearly uh, anybody who selects a, a new platform for a new device is going to take a 3D capable platform. And you, when you see all the services that have been announced around the world, these are you know, cable, satellite, broadcasts, IPTV services. Uh, <coughs> These are the announcements we've seen in the past few months. I'm sure there's many more. Uh, but you see the map is already crowded uh, all around the world with uh, 3D services, 3D content being broadcast to consumers all around the world on all continents. So it's, it's a wave that will not be stopped. Another important thing for us, as I mentioned already, this is both government driven, but also consumer driven, and also product cost and reliability driven is the need for power uh, reduction. We've always been leaders there. And if you compare us with you know, the, the two American uh, suppliers in this, in this industry, we're clearly ahead of the game. And we clearly offer uh, a better platform and lower cost platform because if you have to put a fan in the box, it costs you <laughs> between two and four dollars, which is the price of an Intel 2D core. So, <laughs> Uh, nobody wants to spend that kind of money. Now I'll, I'll come back on each of these big items and show you where ST fits and where uh, we think we stand. Um, one thing I didn't mention because we always focus on the, on the big SOCs more than on the other, other chips. Uh, you can see, uh, by the way, this is the first slide that has this little sticker here. On the top right you have a demo sticker. And any slide that you have with, with this means you can go and see a corresponding demo here. Here we're, de we're doing a demo of a sound tunnel, which is a, a smart, uh, intelligent power amplifier with DSP capability on it uh, to, to improve the sound. Um, this demo shows, shows uh, actually a, an implementation which is very good for uh, future tablets. Uh, because it interfaces with a, with a solid state microphone, a lens microphone, and solid state speakers. Uh, because, you know, thin, thin is the name of the game for, uh, for tablets. Um, and it sh shows what will be the future uh, of tablet sound systems um, interfacing with, with modern uh, sensors uh, around it. And, and giving incredibly good sound. The experience we had in delivering uh, 180 million so far, <laughs> that's what this chart says, says. We've delivered already 180 million intelligent amplifiers in the TV, in the flat screen space. Uh, what we learn about flat screen, flat speakers, we can apply to tablets as well uh, to, to deliver better sound for uh, very thin uh, portable devices. Another technology which has a demo, this is the first year we're demoing this, this technology here, is, is Mocha. I know there's been a lot of curiosity about what ST is doing in Mocha. Well, ST has a 7108M uh, device, which is a Mocha enabled uh, version of the 7108, a uh, third generation product. And you can see it working there. This is Mocha 1.x, 1.1. Uh, we're working on the Mocha 2. Uh, we will have samples this year. We'll be ready for production next year. Now, I'm not so sure there will be production in 2012 of Mocha 2 because the market is quite happy with Mocha 1. Um, but eventually, it, it doesn't hurt to be ahead of the market. So we'll be ready for production in 2012 with our, our Mocha 2 technology. Another very important technology for us, also with demo, is uh, display port. Uh, this is a new uh, video interconnect standard which we've been driving. Uh, we are the uh, leading contributor in the uh, specification of that standard. Uh, it's starting to penetrate very heavily uh, the monitor market. You see some of the charts here and some of the adopters uh, of that technology. Uh, there's quite a lot of nice names and it will go out of the uh, pure uh, monitor or laptop applications. It will go into mobile devices as well because uh, this is the very best technology to, uh, to uh, transport video uh, across cheap connectors and cheap uh, 
uh, cables. So this, this is a this is a very important technology for us, which we're pushing in many markets. And uh, although this chart shows uh, monetary numbers, uh, we'll be able to show you in the future uh, other numbers which are on other markets which have not been announced yet, so we can't talk about it. But definitely, that that technology will be pervasive in many uh, many different markets, not only monitors. I've been talking about G2, G3, G4. Um, if you remember last year's presentation, <laughs> you know what I meant. For those who were not here last year, uh, this is what it means. Gen 2 is our 55 nanometer uh, generation products, which is has been in mass production since 2009. Gen 3 is the uh, product we, we introduced last year at CS. We have samples and demos. Um, and now, 2011, we'll, we'll see the, the mass production. This applies both to TV and set box. So for set top box, it's 71 weight. For TV, it's Freeman, Freeman Ultra, uh, with this diamond retaining chip. Um, and G4 is the ARM based uh, new platforms. So this is G2, G3, G4. G3 is today 55 nanometer. Uh, it's between 2000 and 3000 MIPS, so already a pretty powerful devices, which we've had for, for a year now. Uh, G4 is a breakthrough uh, product which we are introducing uh, now, uh, this year for samples, and next year for mass production. These are uh, dual Cortex A9 based uh, devices, above 8,000 MIPS, so <laughs> I think it uh, outperforms by far uh, whatever our competitors uh, are able to present and introduce this year. So again, we're, we're, we're introducing a game changer kind of device, uh, which will go both in set top box and TVs and gateways actually down the road. So if you look at the kind of markets we've been uh, addressing, first we went and addressed broadcaster-centric uh, devices, that's from 1995, yeah, since we started shipping to direct TV in the US. Um, this year we'll see the introduction of uh, new technologies, HPV TV, mostly for TV business, UView, or people remember maybe the Canvas name uh, that's been driven by the BBC. Um, these are kind of connected devices, of course, but all guarded without going everywhere on the web. And then you, we have the open platforms, you know, Android or Google TV type, or Vigo, or Adobe Air kind of devices. So we, we address them with our own map very well. Uh, Gen 2 is a perfect fit for the broadcast-centric world. Gen 3 is perfect for the wall garden and a bit of open internet world. And of course, G4, uh, with its amazing performance, uh, is ideal for the, for the uh, open source, open platform type, open internet type uh, platforms. The world is complex, uh, many players. Uh, we have a lot of demos uh, showing various uh, services, various platforms, various uh, technologies. I uh, encourage you to go around and, and see all of them. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of software from various uh, people running on SD Silicon. And uh, I think you'll be quite impressed to see what we can run on G2, G3, and, and G4 prototypes, which we have here. Uh, you will see ARM uh, based platforms running uh, here, some, some pretty amazing stuff. Uh, in, in our demos. 3D also, you will, I encourage you to spend some time to look at uh, the, the new technologies we are introducing with, uh, with Freeman, uh, on stereoscopic 3D in particular, and, and how comfortable it has become. If you compare the demos we had a year ago and, and the products we have now, uh, there, is a, there is a great improvement in terms of quality, in terms of comfort, and, uh, and uh, ease of use. And uh, if you look at some of the stuff we've done with ARM on uh, 3D graphics uh, gaming, I think you'll be quite impressed with the performance we're getting out of our silicon, which is only early prototype silicon for now. Uh, when it comes uh, production ready, it, it'll be even better. So again, nice demos, uh, great technology, which is working today. And then there's plenty of uh, maybe more um, leading edge, even more leading edge things about new interaction between consumers and their, their consumer equipment. 
um, using other strengths in ST, not only HEV-made products, uh, system on chips, but also using uh, cameras, using accelerometers, bands, uh, microphones, uh, user recognition type systems to uh, provide a better experience for our device. This is one unique advantage ST has. Uh, not only we have leading edge system on chips, uh, on leading edge technologies working on leading, with leading edge performance, but we also have all the very rich portfolio of devices, including uh, MEMS, uh, with uh, which we can build total solutions for our customers. Coming back to, to uh, green uh, environmental friendly devices, I uh, just want to remind you the leaders since day one, or even before day one, even before ISO 14000 was released, uh, in 96, we had NST policies two and three years before uh, about environment protection, and this is part of our DNA now uh, for more than 15 years, and uh, we take that into account in every device we, we design and we offer. And you can see here G1, G2, G4, G3, G4, uh, ahead of any regulation, and ahead uh, in the US or Energy Star, in the, in the EU also, and ahead of competition. Uh, we provide low power silicon, um, which is tricky, you know, it's, it's, it, it looks simple on a slide like this, but it, it means doing very fast devices, because we have to be ahead of on performance on low power uh, processes. Most of our competitors use very high power processes and therefore produce high power devices. Um, high power, they, they get the same speed we get eventually, but they, can, they have a lot more power consumption, which is a disadvantage for the overall system. Finally, I want to talk about the G4, which again, you'll see uh, ARM-based uh, demos here. Um, basically, we, we, we've adopted ARM and have announced it last year. Now you're going to see demos in silicon. Um, because we think we have to marry both the ST leadership areas, which is, you know, in building uh, a set of box and digital TV system on chips, and providing the best security, best content protection, and providing uh, leading edge processes, together with the ARM advantages. So we marry those advantages. ARM has been there uh, with the best performance, the best uh, power efficiency from day one, and has a very fast growing ecosystem thanks to the adoption of ARM by Apple, by most of the uh, Android based devices. The amount of software that's available based on ARM is, uh, is growing every day uh, tremendously. So the overall ecosystem is there, uh, which together with the SD strength is building a, an unbeatable plat platform. So that's the first G4 product here. You have the layout of the dice, so you see on the top uh, left the dual Cortex A9 processor, and the rest is, uh, well, the Mali is also the 3D cell from ARM. The rest is ST uh, IP, of course, putting together uh, uh, really a breakthrough product, uh, which is way ahead of any, any competitor. So that sets a new benchmark, more than 8,000 MIPS. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do on more than 8,000 MIPS. Um, Actually, I don't know what we could do, <laughs> uh, but definitely we can do more than anybody else at a, at a price that is very competitive. So because uh, these products will be introduced in samples uh, in 32 nanometer and will be in production next year in 28 nanometer. So we're also a step ahead in terms of process density uh, compared to some of the announcements of the uh, non Intel competitors. Intel, of course, has a different process roadmap which is difficult to compare, but you know, when, when we say we have 3228, they also say they have 3228, so let's say we're comparable there. But we're, way, we're one generation ahead of the other competitors. 2011, um, of course, we want to continue to be leaders in set-top box, that would be foolish not to. Uh, clearly, an important step for us is to start getting shared in the US, but <laughs> and definitely continue to regain share in the US. Yeah. Um, for sure, the other markets, <laughs> François <laughs> and Marco, are very important to our heart as well. So we want to continue to lead in the box. 
Uh, just to give you some numbers, because the others are just starting to address those markets, we've already shipped more than 51 million uh, chipsets in, in Eastern Europe and China, for example, more than 16 million in India, more than 11 million in Latin America. Um, I mean, nobody even comes close. <laughs> so they're starting to address those markets. Uh, we've, we've been established there, and we're, we are in a, in a very good leadership position in those markets already. And Latin, is a, Latin America is about to explode. We have a good position. And of course, uh, another very important priority for me, uh, for the team, and Luigi over there in particular, is to, is to continue the ramp up of Freeman, Freeman Ultra, the G3 generation, uh, for our digital TV chipset, uh, which have been adopted now by some, uh, some very major players in this industry. And uh, of course, prepare for Newman. Newman is the generation four uh, product. Again, 28 nano, 8,000 nits, ARM based. Uh, fantastic chipset. So these are the very obvious two key priorities uh, for us in 2011. Conclusion uh, from my side, I see plenty of growth. Uh, it's not because we're leaders uh, in, in the top box that we can't grow. There's plenty of growth, first, as, as Bob said, to regain market share in the US for set of box. There's tremendous growth potential in digital TV because we're still a small player in a very big market. Um, and there's a lot of new applications. We are leaders in the sound chips for digital TVs, for flat screen TVs, but there's a lot of applications for that technology in, in portable mobile devices. So that's a, that's a good growth opportunity uh, for us. Clearly, the market is helping us. I mean, this digital connected living room uh, is, a, is a trend that helps ST. Uh, the uh, rich user experience is a trend that helps ST as well. The green regulations are helping us. So the, the market trends are all in our favor. Um, and we have fantastic assets to succeed. Uh, we have a leadership position. We are performance leaders We're at a time where performance is becoming very important. And, uh, and we have this environmental commitment, which is you know, 16, 17 year old, uh, which is becoming very important. Uh, we've been investing in it way ahead of, of the real need, uh, just because we believe eventually it will be important for society. Uh, clearly now is a time where it's becoming a competitive advantage uh, against some of the new players in the, in the, in the consumer world. So.